Hello everyone, what's happening? This is Forgo, and today I'm going to try to provide some insight as to what kind of character you should use certain option cards on. So if we take a look at the battle cards, now I'm not going to go over every single card in here. I'm not going to do that because most of them I feel are worthless, uh, useless for the most part. I mean, everybody plays different, but all the content that I've done in the game, which is everything, I've never needed... Pretty much most of these cards. I just haven't needed them. You see, I got a lot of cards of skill level one, level one. That's because I've never needed them. I never used them. Some cards I experimented with like with these cards, but they really proved to be pretty much useless. Now there are some useful cards in here for sure, but it's few in between. Now the two most important cards are gonna be the Maxima card here and the Kula K card here. These two babies, because they offer that cooldown. Are going to be the most important when this is at level 10 that goes up to 1.9 seconds you have two of those cards on your character that decreases their cooldowns by almost four seconds you know the maximum card gives hp and this card here gives increased defense these are great cards to put on your defensive characters and even put on your balance type characters and for your attack type characters you'd be better off to go with hp with the maxima cards that's just one little tidbit if you're character is awakened then i would probably you know depending on what game mode if you're in pvp always use your cooldown cards this is just my personal opinion but if you're in pve content maybe you're in hell's dungeon then i would just put one cooldown card on them and use one elemental card now which elemental cards are the best this is number one for the most part uh because of the insane damage buff that this thing gives you know the increased critical rate by four percent 50% chance to deal chill damage equal to 140% of attack to the target upon landing a critical hit. Uh, it's an amazing, amazing card. Lots of extra chill damage. Wonderful for the Shizuru event. And then you have the bow card here. The bow card is also amazing because it gives an increased attack, increased shock and chill. If your character's awakened, you can put this card and the Zhang Fei card on and just deal insane chill damage. And plus you get the extra attack, which is really nice. Another great card is this card here, which is the For Victory card. It gives you increased attack, increased bleed, and poison. And that can be very useful as well. That's actually really good against the Shizura event as well. And that bleed can actually be very useful in Epic Quest. So if your character's awakened, having these cards on would really be good. And another little tidbit is, say your character... Uh, has two skills that deal uh, elemental damage. So let me see here. Let me see if I can find one. Uh, look at Swimsuit Kula here. So Swimsuit Kula, she has, she can deal chill damage on her first skill, and she can deal chill damage on her third skill. This is a character that I just run two cooldown cards if they're not awakened. If they're awakened, throw on your freaking elemental cards. Throw on a cooldown card here, and throw on an elemental card here. But because she has two skills that deal uh, elemental damage, I probably, you know, from the testing that I've done, uh, it's just better just to run with cooldown. However, if she's awakened, then of course, put your elemental card on her. Uh, you take a character like, let's see, and we tested Lady Yashiro. Uh, let me see here. Uh, find her. You take a look at Mei Li. Mei Li, uh, she has power charge right here. She has nothing here. And she deals shock damage on her third skill. She only has one skill that deals shock damage. And yes, from her core effects, she deals uh, more shock damage as well, depending on her critical hits. But for a character like this, because she only has one skill that deals uh, elemental damage, that's what I'm calling it, whether it's shock, bleed, poison, chill, whatever, then I would put an elemental card on him. So... Characters that only have one skill that deal element, put an elemental card on them. Characters that have two skills or more that deal element, put two cooldown cards if they're not awakened. Now this is probably not 100% right because I haven't tested every single character in this game. But from the testing I've done so far, that's the way it's working out. Now, which cards to recommend here? Let's go. So... The Bao card definitely, the Four Victory card, and the Zhang Fei card are by far the best. Now, there are other cards that can be useful. I mean, the Hiramaru card, it's a collab card. Unfortunately, it's not in here. 
Uh, this is also a wonderful card, one of the best cards in the game for dealing that extra bleed. But a lot of people don't have it, so I'm not really trying to focus on collab cards. But you have all these other cards. I mean, honestly, guys, I really should just be deleting them and using them as fodder because they just sit in my inventory. They don't do anything. <laughs> I mean, they just sit here. I mean, there are some uh, useful cards. If I can find one here, let me see if I can find uh, another card here that I'm looking for. So many cards, so many cards. Let's see here. Hmm. Here we go. Like this card here. This is useful. It gives you increased attack. It's only level one, so that goes up. Increased critical rate. And then it increased critical damage by 15%. That's actually a good card. But again, for a character that is awakened. This is the only time I'd ever put this card on a character. Is if they're awakened so you can spam their skills and take full advantage of those buffs. The rock card here is a great card also because of the cooldown attack. It doesn't have the max cooldown that the Maxima card and the Kula cards have. It doesn't go up to 1.9%, but still, I think it goes up to 1.2, I think. But you get the Reflect, Increased Attack, but again, it's a collab card, and a lot of people don't have it. This could be a useful card as well. Uh, the original plan card, this could be useful for characters that don't have Super Armor because it does increase your attack, and it does give you a 20% chance to gain Super Armor for, uh, and this is going to go up when attacked. You know, some characters don't have Super Armor, and when you're attacked, you get that Super Armor, so that could give you that window to get the win some people would use this kind of card and pvp especially in championship but i can tell you from experience i used to do this kind of thing where i'd equip one of these cards say on a character like kazia who has no super armor or i would equip one of the tekken cards which has the same options we take a look at these increase attack this gives increased critical rate and then the chance to gain super armor i would put one of these cards on characters that don't have super armor and I found after a while when I got better at playing or what I or when I felt more comfortable, I didn't need these cards anymore. Uh, I just didn't need them. In fact, I found it was just better just to have my cool down. So they're good cards and they definitely can come in handy. I mean, even like on a character like Geese or Terry who got a stun on their second skill, when they hit their character, they stun them. You can get that super armor immediately. And that would work great with those characters because they get their super armor based off their core effects. You know, Geese, you got to use the his blast skills, his first or third skill to get the super armor on a successful attack. And Terry, you got to guard to get his super armor up. So this could come in handy where you could use the super armor skill. You could do a second skill from Geese or Terry and then get that super armor, go into your skills, and then you could try to get super armor from those characters by their other means. I mean, good cards, but again, I just, I never use them. I never need them. All these other cards in here, I mean, all these, like, four stars and five stars, I just use them for fodder. That's all I've ever used these cards for. I've never needed them. And, you know, that's something you're going to hear a lot. I just, I just never needed these cards, you know. Cards like this, they give the increased active skill uh, increase is nice. But again, it's just, it's just not good enough, you know. They're... They're not good enough. If they don't have cooldown on them, I just don't use them. You know, I mainly stick with these two cards pretty much for all my characters. And the, in fact, the only time that I ever equip uh, the Zhang Fei card or the Bao card or the Four Victory card is against Shizuru. Uh, maybe in Hell's Dungeon, I might throw this card here on my Valentine Kula to synergize really well with her chill damage because she is awakened. And she will do more damage with this card. But I just never needed them, honestly. Sorry about that. My game crashed. So anyways, uh, I just never use any of these cards except for the cooldown cards. That's pretty much what I've always stuck with. Uh, there are some other cards that are interesting. If you go to the exchange here, go to the option cards. Uh, you scroll down here. And they have these cards right here. Now these are interesting cards, you know, you know, for Keo and not for Ness Keo, but for the regular Keos. This gives an increased attack, deals additional damage to six percent of attack upon landing a critical hit. It's got the PvP exclusive, increases damage dealt to Orochi Clan by 1.7%, and then available to destroy the real stone of Kusanagi. And the stones are in against uh, false Orochi Epic Quest. You got three different stones. 
uh, from the three different clans, you know, Kusanagi being one of those clans. And they're useful cards for that, but because they don't have cooldown, and they just, I don't feel they're needed. And honestly, they're not needed anyways, because you have characters with damage immunity. I mean, if you don't have a character with damage immunity, if you're going against Boss Orochi and Epic Quest, and you don't have a, a character with damage immunity, maybe then you would use this, but even then, if you use a character's special skill to get out of here, and you use a character... If you use a character's special skill, not their ultimate skill, but if you use their special skill, then during this time frame, you're invincible. Now, she's got a short one, so she probably wouldn't be the best for that, but, but some characters, they have fairly long animations on their special skill, and it's going to make you invincible. So, you really, the having those cards that give you those effects that are going to work against the stones and false Orochi, I just feel can be useful, but not really. Like I said, I've never needed them. I've never used them. You have this card here that increases power charge rate upon one, uh, by 1% upon male fighters attack. This is a decent card, but again, I'd rather have cooldown. I mean, you're going to hear me say that over and over and over because from all the experience that I have playing this game, I've just never needed any of these things. Maybe some of you players out there do, and that's cool, that's fine, but I've just never needed them. So again, you know, uh, for so if you have characters that only have one skill that deals elemental damage and they're not awakened, throw on a cooldown card and one of those elemental cards, whether it's that uh, for victory card or bow card or Zhang Fei card, those are the three best ones in my opinion. Uh, throw that card on them with a cooldown card. If your character has two uh, skills that deal elemental damage then put two cooldown cards on them and if they're awakened anything goes you just put whatever on them but if you put elemental cards on them they're going to do more damage however however if you're playing in pvp then i would always run with cooldown but that's just my personal opinion so let me know how you're all doing in the game let me know what characters you've gotten what cards you've gotten and let me know if you agree with what i think about the option cards so I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Y'all take care and have a good one.